Hello everyone and welcome to today's online tutorial. Our topic today is a uh, symmetric data distribution. So I will be explaining uh, a symmetric data, how it looks like, its properties, and uh, certain mathematical tools that can be used to analyze a symmetric data distribution such as what we call the mean absolute deviation so through this example we are going to look at you will understand symmetric data distribution and uh, what we call the mean absolute deviation and how it is used okay let's look at this example we have uh, the data shows the recent number of coronavirus cases across 17 areas. Question 1 says, A, is the data symmetric? And B, find the center and the spread of the distribution. So the very first thing is, is this data symmetric? How do we know if this data is symmetric? We need to first make a plot for this data. So first uh, we have a line, like a number line, and um, we can put all the data value on this line. Uh, if we look at this, we have the smallest value here as two. So we can start from 2. So on our number line, let's say we put 2 there. Okay, let this be 2. We still have another value, which is 3. There is 3 on, in the data. We have 4. So you do this for all the values you have. Okay, and then the next thing we are going to do is... Uh, Let's place uh, these uh, data values in this line. So uh, 2, let's start with 2. We can see 2 appears just once. So we can have this, let's say 2 appears just once. Let's look at uh, the next number, the data 3. We have 3, 2 times 1, 2. Okay, so we can have a 3 appear 2 times, so we have 1, 2, just like this, okay? Uh, we look at the next number, uh, let's see 4, 4 appears how many times? 1, 2, and uh, 3, so we have 4, 3 times, so we can have, we have 1, 2, and 3. Let's look at the next number. Uh, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have 5 appearing 5 times. So let's plot it. We can have 1, 2, 3, 4, and uh, 5. And then the next number, we have a 6. How many times? 1, so six times, oh sorry, two times. So six appeared twice. So we have one and uh, two. And the next number, no, it appears three times. So plus this, that is uh, three, so three times. So you can see what happens now. So if you cross your data, you can easily know if you have made a mistake or not, okay? Like, I, I, I was able to see that 6 is still standing here. So it appears 3 times. So under the next number, let's look at 7. Always cross it out so as to know not to leave any number aside. So we have 7, 2 times 1, 2. Okay, so we can have it here 2 times 1 and uh, 2. And uh, let's see, is there any number left? By observation, you can see that uh, 8 is still remaining. So we have 8. And uh, we have crossed all the numbers out. Very good. So 8 only appear once, one time. So 
can have this one. Okay, so now we need to look at this. Is the data symmetric? How do you know if a data is symmetric? First, which is the peak here? Looking at the number 5, you see that 5 appears as the highest. So across 5 areas. So this is the highest and that is because the peak. This gives us the peak across at 5. Okay. So now look at the left side. The left side of so the peak and the right side to the peak. Do we have something identical? This is the left side and this is the right side. If you look at these two sides, you see that they are identical. Okay? The left side of the data, we say, mirrors the right side. As we have here, there are three values here. Look at the three values, three values. We have two and we have two. One and we have one. So the left side to the peak mirrors the right side of the peak. So when you have this type, you say the data is symmetric. So it is a symmetric data distribution. Now, for a symmetric data, how do you find its center and the spread? There are two tools which we use to find center and spread of a symmetric data distribution and the two are what we call the mean and the mean absolute deviation okay so the mean is used to describe the center of the data and the mean absolute deviation is used to describe the spread of the data please check our previous video on the Descriptive uh, Statistics 1, where we look for mean, median, mode, range, and quartiles. Okay, mean, you remember that to find mean, it is simply sum of all the data over the count. So with this, you need to get the mean out, adding all the data starting from 4 and ending at this 3. Yeah? So we have 4 plus 8 plus 5 be divided by the counts if you count all these numbers they are 17 in numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 so that's the count this is how you find the mean so at the end of the day if you use your calculator you get the mean And that's going to give us a uh, 5. So we have our mean as a uh, 5. So this mean is the center which we are looking for. So find the center of the distribution. So the center of the distribution is 5. And if you look at this, actually look at this. Uh, the center, these are three set of data here. And these are three sets of data here. So the center is a uh, 5. So we have a uh, 5. The next thing we are going to do is to find the mean absolute deviation. So to find the mean absolute deviation, there are three steps involved. The very first step is the one we've just done, which is how to find the mean, which is the average. The second step is you have to do this, find the absolute difference of each data value and the mean that is each data value you have here for example 4 minus the mean the absolute difference of the data value and mean but before we proceed remember when you say absolute the absolute of a negative number is going to give you the positive number plus 1 which is 1 that is the absolute value of negative 5 
is just 5. Take note of that. So for us to be able to find this mean absolute deviation, we need to do this for all of this. So it's going to take us through this. So let's see what we're going to do. The first data value here is 4. So you have the absolute difference of 4 minus the mean 5. It gets your answer. You do the next one. 8. So we've done 4. You do for 8. So that's going to be 8 minus the mean 5. The next, you have 5. So we do 5 minus 5. And that is going to give us 0. So you do for all these. And at the end of the day, and the last one, which is 3. So you have the value 3 minus the mean 5. Okay. So be very careful when you are doing this so as not to make any mistake. You make any mistake here, it's going to affect all your values. So 6 minus 5, 1. 4 minus 5, minus 1. But we know that the absolute value of minus 1 is 1. So 1, we have a 3. 3 minus 5, that's a 2. And we have 2. So this is the step 2 to finding mean absolute deviation. What is now the step three? Step three is very easy. It says find the mean of all the absolute values you've gotten. Find the mean of all the absolute values. So that is all the absolute values are starting from this one, three. So you find the mean by adding all together and dividing by the. So we have all these divided by the count, which is still 17, starting from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If you count everything, you get 17. So this is how you find the mean absolute value. That's going to give us a 20 divided by 17, which gives a 1.18. And we can still take that to 1.2. So this is the spread. This is the spread, which we call the mean absolute deviation. All right, guys, that's it. Try and rewind back to see how we've done it again and uh, lay your hands on some examples all right guys bye bye and have a nice day see you